I was completely wrong about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. They just dropped one of the greatest DLC trailers I have ever seen from this game. They teased a lot of stuff, including some future DLC, which from the looks of this trailer is going to be pretty nice. Future Spectre jumping in here. I have Discord server and Twitter in the description. Go check them out. Thank you. Back to the video. Now I said I was wrong about Xenoverse 2 and you might be wondering why I said that. For some context, a while back I made a video discussing how I thought Xenoverse 2 was finally going to end and it was kind of in a downward spiral. From the start of its lifespan, I felt as if Xenoverse 2 really just rehashed a lot of things from Xenoverse 1. The main thing being the story. Thankfully it seems with these DLC packs they're kind of branching out a little into the what if territory, which is sort of what Xenoverse was actually supposed to be. You might have noticed that throughout the previous DLC and stories, they didn't really branch out too far into the what-if territory. Maybe some slight alterations here and there, but nothing major. This doesn't include the superhero pack, however, because that was actually a really nice DLC. Now it seems they've abandoned their previous path and are actually branching out, which is really cool to see. So let's quickly go over what they showed off in this trailer. The story of this DLC is based on another one of Few's interventions. And they have teased two of the three new characters, which are Vegeta, Super Saiyan God Ultra Super Villain, I'll get to that later, and Goku Black, Super Saiyan Rose Ultra Super Villain. They have mentioned an additional scenario and other content, so to be stay tuned for more. And they seem to have named it DLC Future Saga Chapter 1, which means obviously we'll get more chapters, but it's interesting that they've named it Future Saga. I don't know if that means anything, but we'll have to wait and see. We saw characters like Goku and Zamasu's body after they switched places. The Universe 6 fighters. God of Destruction Beerus during the Battle of God Saga. A strange new version of the Time Ring which Few has, which may be why this is called the Future Saga. We're having a look into the future. But I think the most hype point of this trailer was Corrupted Super Saiyan God Vegeta against Super Saiyan God Goku. I'm very hyped for this, but there is something I wanted to touch on, which is Vegeta's new form the Ultra Super Villain Super Saiyan God, or Corrupted Super Saiyan God, as some call it. The problem I have with this is that I was under the impression that Super Saiyan God was supposed to be a, some sort of a pure form, and having Vegeta go evil, again, is a little strange to me. I don't really know how that works. Maybe there's something about Super Saiyan God I'm missing. I don't know if they're just ignoring lore or making their own canon. However, it's still cool to see. I'm not denying that at all. In fact, it looks a little similar to Giblet's corrupted Super Saiyan God form with the Dark Key in Dragon Ball Legends. Hopefully this Vegeta will have, you know, his own new moveset and skills and everything. But yeah, having Vegeta go evil again is kind of a repetitive sort of thing. I I'm still hyped for it, but it is a little bit, you know, tiring if one might say that. I think what I'm doing is confusing Goku with Vegeta because in the original Xenoverse story, Goku went Super Saiyan God and Demigrad couldn't control him using his Dark Key. So maybe I'm just confusing the two. But regardless, this is awesome. I just wanted to point that out. Xeno Coffee Mods on Twitter actually pointed out some really good things. I wanted to read them out. So he noticed that Few isn't evil, which is keeping Xenoverse's story consistent, which is good because Few himself isn't exactly an evil character. He's more like an Experimenter. We saw this in the Heroes anime and in the Heroes game itself. He's not really evil. Uh, everything's doing is for his entertainment. Again, same thing. And it seems as if that our custom characters may get this new version of the Time Ring, which would be pretty nice. I mean, we might be able to make different choices in the game, which, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. It would be cool if the Time Ring wasn't just for story or artistic purposes. We might actually have a use for it. Again, this is speculation. So the Ultra Super Villain power creates brand new rifts. I did notice that they were really different from the original rifts we saw in Xenoverse 2. Goku Black interacting with Few. Okay, that's probably when he gets his power. And finally, it seems as if Goten is present during the Goku and Zamasu's body and Few interaction. We see this in this picture here. Now we know from the anime Goten was present there as well. So this is likely that sort of similar situation. All of this has got a lot of people excited, although some people are still upset that there's not a lot of manga content in different Dragon Ball games. In this case, it's Ultra Ego. They think that this new Vegeta form is some kind of discount Ultra Ego. Honestly, it's not that deep. It's good that they're going in a different direction. If they're going to include manga, they'll include it when the time is right or not at all. That's up to them. But I'm glad that we're getting different what-ifs and 
new content that we didn't really think was possible. And to clarify, I think the issue as to why we're not having manga content more in the video games is because of licensing issues, because they have to bring it to outside of Japan or something like that. I'm not too sure, but I know for a fact it's licensing issues. Disregarding the negativity, we have more DLC coming in the future, as well as another character that has been teased in the roadmap. Now, we don't know who this character might be. It could be Trunks, could be future Gohan. I'd be really excited if we see future Gohan. They may go with some sort of Dragon Ball Heroes route, but I severely doubt that. I think that's on the lower end of the list. My bet is future Gohan, maybe Super Saiyan 2 or 3, something like that. A different version of him. I don't think it's Vegito or Gogeta. It could be a Super Saiyan God version of them. That's always a possibility, but I doubt that. And talking about the other chapters coming in the future, well, as I said, this one's called Future Saga Chapter 1, which means we're going to get Chapter 2, 3, and 4, likely. And what I've realized is that that seems to be focusing on, as it says, the Future Saga of Dragon Ball Super. So in my opinion, I think what's happening is that different points in time in the Future Saga are going to be altered by few. We may see Gogeta replacing Vegito. We may see Trunks with a brand new form instead of Super Saiyan Rage. We may have a completely different outcome to the fight. Maybe Gohan comes in to help with the future saga. Could we see something as wacky as Beast Gohan early versus Rose Goku Black? I don't know. It's just what if territory right now. But I suppose that's the main point. Anything is possible. And to be fair, if there was a time to include manga content in Xenoverse 2, it would be now because the future saga in the manga is quite different to the future saga in the anime. Notable examples include Trunks stabbing Goku Black and he just gets up because he's immortal. The multiple copies of fused Zamasu, perfected Super Saiyan Blue and Goku using Hakai. Not to mention Goku and Vegeta using Super Saiyan God in this arc instead of Goku using it in the Tournament of Power in the anime and Vegeta only using it in the Broly movie. So there's a lot of opportunity for different variations to happen. We may see, as I said, anything. There's a lot of fan theories on Twitter. Everybody's speculating. And honestly, I think this is one of the greatest points for Xenoverse 2 right now, is that everyone's focused on it. They've released something good. And hopefully they don't fumble this, because if they don't, it's a massive moneymaker for them. Truth be told, there are a lot of people that think that Xenoverse 2 should just end, maybe make a Xenoverse 3, or just focus on Sparking Zero. In my opinion, I think it's great that a game like this can go on for so long. I mean, I understand, you know, what I'm about to compare isn't the same, but could you say the same thing about Dragon Ball Legends or even Dokkan Battle, which has gone on longer? Not really is the answer. But let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for this DLC? What do you think is going to happen in future DLC? Let me know what you think in the comments below and have a good one.